This is ESBR Boxing. Delighted as always to be joined by Elliot Grigg. And we are again, once again, in preview mode as we are heading to Phoenix, Arizona, the Footprint, Cent Footprint Center on Saturday, the 27th of January as Jaime Munguia faces John Ryder in a super middleweight contest. Elliot, you know, Jaime Munguia, one of the you know, stars of US boxing, so to speak, 42 and 0 now, 32, 33 knockouts, sorry, still only 27 years old, former world champion at super welterweight. You look at John Ryder, last time out he was in with Canelo, he shared the ring with the likes of, you know, Calum Smith, Daniel Jacobs, uh, beat Zach Parker as fighters like that as well. Um, but yeah, the first question I want to ask you, mate, is about Jaime Munguia. You know, a lot of people think he is the, the next coming of, of, Whoever, one of the best fighters in the US. But out of with a 42 0 record, it looks good on paper. My question for you, mate, is straight in is does Jaime Munguia have the single most padded record in boxing? <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul, for that eloquent breakdown. I think what a question. Um, I don't know whether my answer has been clouded by uh, having you, been speaking to you over the last sort of, 18 months or two years, but arguably, yes, I think it is. I mean, it's a tough one because like, Derechenko last time out is a kind of it's a good win to be perfectly honest, you know, because he's lost the like only the likes you know Charlo and and you know the sort of Jay Jacobs and the better names in that division. But then I look through his actual record, and you actually what you really see is guys that you kind of recognise as like tick over fights for other fighters. Um, you know, you've got like the likes of Demetrius Ballard, Rosado, Cesar Marta, these kind of names. You think, oh, I remember some fighting like maybe Triple G and some like random fighting like as a tick over sort of thing. And then you go Gary O'Sullivan, not necessarily making it. Um, at that world level either and the thing for me i think liam smith is a good win don't get me wrong that's a good win but i think um the reason i say yes it's not necessarily there's some, there's some all right names there's some recognizable names on there but it's more the volume of fights he's had like to have to be 42 and 0 and to have only really fought liam williams and not liam williams sorry liam smith to my mind is well apart from derichenko last night so those two names let's say the two names i really give him out of 42 victories that are kind of really live at that level I think you'd have to say is quite padded. And I think when you think of the other names, I suppose he's looking to fight around that sort of Mexican scene, which I'm sure we'll get onto light years away from fighting the likes of, you know, I mean, he's talking about that, the, the fight with Benavides, he's talking about the fight with Canelo, light years away from the CVs of either of those people. So yeah, I think actually, you know, you look at it, like you say, former world champion, looks great on paper, 42 and 0, but two, two of those victories decent. So I'm going to say yes, Paul. I'm going to hand the floor over to you, though, now, frankly, because you're a man who has got a Jamie Mungia T-shirt for Christmas and a Secret Santa, which you're not wearing today, much to uh, our viewers and my and my uh, disappointment. Do you agree or disagree? Is Mungia's record the most padded in world boxing, especially for a champion or not? Yes or no? Yeah, mate. Forgot that Jaime Mungia one, maybe. It must, it must be because I've got it framed and up, up in the hall in the house here. Um, I love him that much. But no, in all serious, mate, yeah, I completely agree with you, mate. I think... Liam Smith's a really good win. I'll give him that. It is a good win. Um, you know, that's how he became WBO Super Welterweight Champion. But again, that was down at Super Welter. Larry Evchenko, good win last time out. But again, expected to win that, probably. And it was a close fight. He didn't win it at a landslide. And as you mentioned, mate, apart from that, who are the other 40 people he has beaten? Let's be honest. Yeah, there's a few names, as you mentioned, Gary Spike O'Sullivan, like Jimmy Kelly or whatever. But like, at what level? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're still young at 27, but you've beaten nobody, really. Um, especially, you know, you can kind of even put the Liam Smith win to one side now because, like, you know, that was so long ago at super welterweight. He's now campaigning at super middleweight. So up at middleweight and super middleweight, who's he beaten? Nobody, really, apart from um, Derevchenko. So, yeah, I think he is one of the most padded records in boxing, mate. Um, you know, kind of reminds me of the... The, the Wilder 32-0 and 0 record before he got the world title shot. You know, even Gilberto Ramirez is what, up at 40-0. and 0. Even his record's probably actually a little bit better um, before he lost, obviously, to, to Bivol. But yeah, mate, it's up there as one of the most, if not the single most padded record in boxing for me. No, I agree. I agree with that, Ramirez. That's a great shout. That's a great shout. That's right up there as well. Ramirez and Mungi are the two. The Eminem are the two. Are the two. <laughs> Feel like feel like I know the answer to this next question. Um, now I as we kind of just both agreed with each other there. So yeah, he's fighting John Ryder, and yeah, John Ryder's records thirty two and sixty. You think oh six six defeats, whatever. But would John Ryder be Mungia's best win? 
You know what? I'm going to say yes straight away. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Now, although Liam Smith win is a good win, don't get me wrong. But I think the reason I'm going to put Ryder above it is because the weight class he's currently in and the fact that Ryder's seasoned at that weight class. And I think Ryder, look, I've been saying this, that Ryder obviously beat Callum Smith in that fight. Obviously didn't go that way. But if you look, uh, if he got the decision that night, which he deserved, you look at this as like, as John Ryder's career is completely different. The trajectory is completely different. Um, so the respect he would get would be completely different. And I think you almost have to look since that fight. Obviously, he got a bit of a a bit of a nod against Danny Jacobs, but it's fine because everything what happened against Callum Smith. But the victory of Zach Parker, where no one expected him to come through that, and then the way he performed against Canelo, I think this should be far and away Munguia's best victory, frankly. If that John Ryder that turns up against sort of Canelo turns up here against Munguia, I think it'd be far and away his best victory, yeah, 100%. I totally concur, mate. It's definitely going to be his best win, as you mentioned. Not discrediting Liam Smith, but as you mentioned, the weight and um, how, how, you know, what level John Ryder has now proven that he is up at super middleweight. John that rider probably you know you would argue isn't even a natural super middleweight. He's small enough. He's only five foot nine. But um, yeah, I think he would definitely be Munguia's best win. I think you know he's got the style to cause problems, um, big problems for Jaime Munguia. He's a southpaw. He you know that style where he's just coming at you with relentless energy and he's coming forward the whole time, not giving you a minute's respite. I think that could really trouble Jaime Munguia. So yeah, I mean I think it would be the single best win on um, Jaime Munguia's. Munguia's resume as well, which kind of leads me on to the point of, you know, I've kind of mentioned there that, you know, John Ryder has a style to give Munguia fits. If Ryder pulls it off, do you see it as a massive upset? Or does part of you actually think, do you know what? It's a realistic chance here that John Ryder hands Jaime Munguia the first defeat of his career. You know what, Paul, I'm, I'm sighing here because that's a tough question and also I haven't looked at the betting odds. I'm not even sure what the kind of betting way is swinging on this one. Um, but I would say, you know what, for me, it'd be a business upset but not a boxing upset if uh, if he wins. I think look, there's a lot of, I think there's been quite a bit of noise about someone like, you know, McGee essentially having, like I said, those fights against Benavides or Canelo as kind of like an all-Mexican sort of showdown. Um, so I see that kind of being a fight that could actually, those fights could potentially happen in the future. John Ryder, though, I think boxing-wise is an established super middleweight. And Munguia, I don't think will stop John Ryder, frankly, up there. I mean, I know he was hurt against Canelo, but he showed true grit coming back there. So I think John Ryder's motivated. This is the, this is the sort of last season is it, for John Ryder. He's had, obviously, like, this is the second coming of John Ryder, but I don't think there's any coming after this. I think if he loses, there's arguably a question around whether he should continue fighting. Well, he's not going to get up, at, I don't think, at that world-level fights again. So... I don't think it'd be an upset, no. I don't think it'd be an upset, but I'm not going to spoil it with my prediction now. I'm going to ask you whether you think it'd be an upset or, uh, or whether you can care with me that it'd be a you know, business upset and a, but not a boxing one or, or how you see it, please, from an upset perspective. Yeah, I think Mungia is the favourite and I understand why I do understand that. Um, but you know what, mate? I'm going to answer two questions in one. I'm going to answer what you said, whether I think it's an upset and I'm going to give my prediction before I hand the floor back to you. Because it would be an upset, and it is going to be an upset, mate. John Ryder's pulling it off, I'm telling you. I know it's in Phoenix, um, Arizona, in the US. You know, Munguia probably have the favourable scorecards from the judges. But I still think John Ryder does enough here to win. People may be thinking that this is one last final big cash grab from John Ryder after the Canelo fight. And, you know, wouldn't blame him if it was just that one final payday. But I think he has enough to beat Munguia, mate. I really don't rate Munguia that highly. Happy to be proven wrong, and Mungia could go on to be this ferocious um, talent. But for me, mate, no, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan at the minute. And I think John Ryder has all of the tools to make it a really close fight. And perhaps, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with John Ryder victory here, mate. What about yourself? Are you going to go points? Paul, you going KO before I get in? Points, yeah, I'm going to go points, which is kind of obviously he'll have, to, he'll have to win 25 rounds of the 12 and um, to get it on points. But I think he might. You know what, Paul, never apologise and don't hold back, mate, because I'm actually going to get on the boat with you, mate, and I'll drown with you if it comes down to it. I don't care. I'm going John Ryder victory here as well. And I actually also agree with you. I think it's going to be on points. Again, if we get some fair judging, um, I think we could do it on points. So that's what I'm looking for. I think Ryder is in some ways underrated. Look, Derevchenko and, and McGee was a close fight. Um, I think Ryder's better than Derevchenko. And I also feel that, look, you know, we've seen, like I said, the second coming of John Ryder. And hopefully, hopefully it's not the, uh, the end of the road because, you know, the man's career has in some ways been sort of disrespected from what happened to him when he should have obviously already been sort of, you know, champion. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm on for you as well. I'm on right, sitting right next to you in the boat, Paul, to be honest with you. And uh, I'm on with it on a rider point to victory. Brilliant, mate. Really enjoyed that chat as always. Guys, let us know your thoughts. Um, do you think John Ryder could pull it off here? Or do you think Jaime Munguia is that good and just hasn't maybe... Does, is, you know, he's beaten, he's beaten who's in front of him. You know, we'll, we'll give him that. 42-0 record, he's beaten everyone put in front of him. 
Um, so yeah, I well, we'll see, mate. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, guys, let us know your thoughts. Um, as to as to who how you think this fight plays out and whether whether or not Mungia's record is the most padded or if there's any other names that come to your come to your mind. But yeah, really enjoyed that one, Elliot. Guys, thanks very much for watching. And Elliot, I'll speak to you again soon, mate. Thank you very much, Paul. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.